So we are finally to the exhibits um, in the back of the collective bargaining agreement, which entail the uniform player contract. And I'm going to jump right into those. Um, I'm only going to do exhibit A through C because uh, that's what's pertinent to the exam. Um, the rest of the exhibits you can certainly find in the collective bargaining agreement if they interest you, which you should know regardless. Um, but for the purposes of this audiobook, we're going to stick with what is pertinent. So to start with exhibit A, uh, it is the uniform player contract that was mentioned so much throughout the CBA. Um, and for starters, number one is the term. The contracts are going to be from the first day of September um, through whatever term, which will be specified in Exhibit A. The services to be rendered by the player will include training camp, practices, meetings, workouts, skill and conditioning sessions, um, games scheduled by the team, regular season exhibition, uh, playoffs. Uh, if they are invited to an NBA All-Star game, then they will need to participate in that as well as rookie or sophomore games rookie and sophomore games, um, and the like. Promotional and commercial activities uh, the team requires, uh, and also um, any G League work assignment and any service in the G League via the two-way contract. Number three is compensation. The team will agree to pay the player the described compensation described in Exhibit 1, Exhibit 1A, Exhibit 1B, or Exhibit 10. And for standard NBA contracts, that compensation will be paid in 24 equal semi-monthly payments beginning on November 15 of, the, of each contract year and continuing on the 1st and 15th of each month until that compensation is paid in full. Now, for two-way contracts, uh, that salary will be paid. Uh, the player's two-way G League salary salary will be paid in 24 equal semi-monthly payments on the 1st and 15th of every month beginning on November 15th and continuing until it is paid in full. And for each NBA day of service that the player accrues prior to the first semi-monthly payment date and between each subsequent semi-monthly payment date, the player will be paid a payment equal to the two-way NBA salary daily rate less the two-way G League salary daily rate multiplied by the number of NBA days of service that player accrues during the NBA day of service period with such payment, if applicable, made on the semi-monthly payment date two weeks after the completion of the NBA day of service payment period. The team will pay the player $2,000 per week pro rata for each week prior to the team's first regular season game that the player is in attendance at NBA training camp or exhibition games, provided, however, that no such payments will be made if, prior to the date on which he is required to attend training camp, he's been paid 10000 or more in compensation with respect to the NBA season scheduled to commence immediately following that training camp. Now, any of the compensation uh, that is via the 2000 per week prior to the season uh, is going to be considered an advance against any compensation owed to the player via paragraph 3A. Um, the first schedule and the first scheduled payment uh, is going to be reduced by the amount of that advance, except in the case of two way players, any compensation paid by the team via this paragraph shall be considered an advance against the player's two way NBA salary only. And the first scheduled payment of that two way NBA salary will be reduced by the amount of that advance. The team will not pay and the player will not accept any bonus or anything of value on account of the team winning other than the final standing of the team. Number four is expenses. The team agrees to pay all proper and necessary expenses of the player, including the reasonable lodging expenses while a player is, quote, on the road and during NBA training camp for as long as the player is not then living at home. The player will be paid a meal expense and no deductions are going to be made for meals served on airplanes. Meal expense allowance will be paid in weekly installments beginning with the first week of training camp. Number four is conduct. Now, with respect to conduct, there are some pretty self-explanatory things like following team rules and being the best you can be on and off the court. Uh, but more specifically, the player agrees to give his best services uh, as well as his loyalty to the team 
and play basketball only for that team and its assignees. Um, has to be neatly dressed in public, public and, again, conduct itself with the higher standards on and off the court. And don't do anything material, materially detrimental or prejudicial to the best interests of the team or the league. For any violation of team rules, any breach of any provision of the contract, the team may reasonably impose fines and or suspensions. The player agrees to be bound by Article 35 of the NBA Constitution, which we'll talk a little more about later. The player agrees that if he is found to have bet on a game or offered or attempted to bet money or anything of value on the outcome of a game, uh, the commissioner has the, the power in his sole discretion to suspend the player indefinitely or expel him from the league, and that decision will be binding, conclusive, and unappealable. The player agrees he will not directly or indirectly entice or persuade any player or coach to enter into negotiations for or related to his services as a basketball player or coach, nor shall he negotiate for or contract for such services, except with the prior written consent of such team. Number six, withholding. In the event that a player is fined, the team can withhold the amount of the fine uh, from any current base compensation that's due to the player. If the current base compensation is not sufficient to cover the fine, then the player agrees to promptly pay the amount directly to the team. And the player is not allowed to allow someone else to pay it on his behalf. Number seven is physical condition. The player agrees to report in physical, in good physical condition and keep himself in good physical condition throughout the NBA season. Now, if a player in the, in the judgment of a team's physician is not in good physical condition at the date of the first scheduled game, the team has the right to suspend the player until the judgment of the team's physician is that he is in good physical condition to play. And in the event of such suspension, the base compensation will be reduced in the same proportion as the length of period during which the player is unfit to play skilled basketball bears the length of the such season. Now, if the player is injured as a direct result in participating in any basketball practice or game play for the team, the team will pay the player's reasonable hospitalization and medical expenses, provided the hospital and doctor are selected by the team. Now, as long as his unfitness continues, but in no event after the player has received his full base compensation for the season in which the injury was sustained, the team will pay the base compensation to the player prescribed in Exhibit 1 to this contract for such season or in the case of a two-way contract um, as long as that unfitness continues but in no event after the two-way player has received his two-way annual G League salary plus any two-way NBA salary earned by that player that two-way player during the NBA regular season prior to the date of his unfitness less the two-way player's two-way G League salary covering the number of NBA days of service accrued by that two-way player during the regular season prior to the date of such unfitness. The player agrees to provide prompt notice of any injury, illness, or medical condition. Should the player suffer an injury, illness, or medical condition, he will submit himself to a medical examination, appropriate medical treatment by a physician designated by the team and such rehabilitation activities as the physician may, phys physician may specify. The player agrees to submit to a physical examination at the beginning and conclusion of each contract and any other such reasonable times determined by the team and at the beginning of this contract and upon the request of the team to provide a complete prior medical history. A player who consults or is treated by a physician, including a psychiatrist or a professional providing non-mental health related medical services, example, a chiropractor, physical therapist, other than one designated by the team will give notice to the team. A player who engages in five or more training or workout sessions with a trainer, uh, other than at the direction of the team, quote, a third party trainer, has to give the notice prior to the first training, provided that if he does not initially plan to continue beyond those five sessions, uh, then the notice need, needs to be provided no later than prior to the fifth session. And it shall not, the notice will not apply to workouts exclusively invol involving jogging, road, bicycling, swimming, yoga, Pilates, and or dance. The, player, the player's failure to comply in and of itself is not going to constitute a material breach of the contract. The player will have a right 
in an off season to work out with one or more third party trainers of his choosing and may not be disciplined for exercising that right. Number eight, prohibit prohibited substances. Number eight, prohibited substances and domestic violence. The player acknowledges that this contract may be terminated in accordance with the express provisions of the anti-drug program, which is Article 33, the joint NBA and MBPA policy on domestic violence, sexual assault and child abuse and immediate di- immediate dismissal and disqualification from any employment by NBA and any of its teams. Now, in the event of such termination, all obligations of the team, including obligations to pay compensation, will cease except uh, for the team to pay the players earned compensation, whether current or deferred to the date of termination. Number nine, unique skills. In the event it is alleged by a team that the player is playing, attempting, or threatening to play or negotiating for the purposes of playing during the term of this contract for any other person, firm, entity, or organization, the team and its assignees has the right to obtain from any court or arbitrator equitable relief as may be appropriate, including a decree enjoining the player from any further such breach of his contract and enjoining the player from playing basketball for any other person, firm, organization during the term of the contract. The player agrees that this right may be enforced by the team or the NBA. In any suit, action, or arbitration proceeding brought to obtain that equitable relief, the player waives his right, if any, to trial by jury and waives his right, if any, to interpose any counterclaim or set off for any cause. Number 10, assignment. The team has a right to assign this contract and the player agrees to accept that assignment. All reasonable expenses incurred by the player in moving himself and his family will be paid to the assignee team paid by the assignee team. Now, if the contract is assigned, the player or his agent needs to be noticed, needs to be given notice by phone or email. And with respect to any assignment by trade, the notice of the trade must be provided to the player or the agent by phone or email, either before the conclusion of the trade call with the NBA or as soon as possible after the conclusion of the trade call. But in no event may such notification be more than one hour after the conclusion or less than one hour prior to the public announcement of the assignment. The player needs to report within 48 hours if the assignment was made during the season and within one week if the assignment is made between seasons. Uh, The NBA has to also notify the Players Association um, in no event later than one business day after the assignment occurs. The player will submit to a physical examination upon reporting as well. If the player without reasonable excuse doesn't report to the team that he was assigned to, the player may be disciplined and that will constitute a conduct prejudicial to the NBA under Article 35D of the NBA Constitution. Number 11, validity and filing. The team agrees to file a copy of the contract and the filing can't be made more than 48 hours after the execution of the contract and or amendments. Um, if the commissioner disapproves the contract within 10 days from the first business day following the day on which the contract is first received, then the contract will thereupon terminate and be of no further force or effect. The 10 day period shall be 15 days for any contract received during the period each year from July 1 through the date that is 14 days following the last day of the moratorium period. If the commissioner's disapproval is subsequently overturned, then it shall shall again be valid and the commissioner will again be afforded another 10 day period to disapprove based on the team's room at the time the commissioner's disapproval is overturned. Number 12, prohibited activities. The player agrees that he will not engage in skydiving, any fighting, boxing or wrestling, using fireworks or participating in anything involving firearms or weapons, riding on electric scooters or hoverboards, driving or riding on a motorcycle, uh, riding on any motorized vehicle in any kind of race or racing contest, operating an aircraft of any kind, engaging in any other activity excluded or prohibited by any insurance policy which the team procures against the injury, illness, or disability to or of the player or death of the player for which the player has received written notice from the team prior to the execution of the contract or participating in any game or exhibition of basketball, football, baseball, hockey, lacrosse, or other team sport competition. 
if the player violates paragraph 12, he will be subject to discipline. Uh, and nothing contained here is going to require the player to obtain written consent of the team in order to participate in, as an amateur, the sports of golf, tennis, handball, swimming, hiking, softball, volleyball, and other similar sports that a reasonable person would not recognize as involving or exposing him to substantial risk of bodily injury. Number 13, promotional activities. The player agrees that he will not make public appearances, participate in radio or television programs, permit his picture to be taken, write or sponsor newspaper or magazine articles, or sponsor commercial products without the written consent of the team, which shall not be held except in the reasonable interest of the team or NBA. The foregoing will be interpreted by the decision in Portland Trailblazers versus Darnell Valentine and Jim Paxson, decision 86-2, August 13, 1986. The player will consent to and make himself available for interviews by representatives of the media conducted at reasonable times. Now, for each promotional appearance, the team will pay the player $3,500. Number 14, league promotion. A player's name, nickname, picture, portrait, likeness, signature, voice, biographical information, or other identifiable features is known as, quote, player attributes. And the NBA and its teams, league-related entities, etc., have the right to use or to authorize others to use after the term of the contract any player attributes fixed in a tangible medium, i.e. filmed, photographed, recorded, or otherwise ca captured during the term of the contract solely for the purposes described via the contract. An unauthorized sponsor promotion means the use of a player's attributes by a third party or anyone on the third party's behalf to promote, market, or advertise the third party's product, service, or brand. Provided, however, the term unauthorized sponsor promotion doesn't include the use of a player's attributes on behalf of a telecaster or a distributor of NBA games. Example, an, advertising promo an advertisement promoting MSG as the home for the New York sports that includes a photograph of a Knicks player or an ESPN advertisement promoting ESPN as the wide world leader or the worldwide leader in sports that includes footage of NBA players. Uh, a telecaster or distributor of NBA programs um, for the use and promotion of sales of tickets to an NBA game or the sale of player identified merchandise um, by a third party when jointly licensed by the NBA Players Association or by or on behalf of a third party as part of league promotion or promotional opportunities via Article 28, Section 3DY. It is unauthorized sponsor promotion for an NBA league entity or NBA team to use a player's player attributes uh, where the use promotes products, services, or brands of the third party that doesn't generate BRI and is not jointly licensed with the Players Association. The player does not and will not contest during or after the term of the contract, and the player acknowledges the exclusive rights of the NBA and its league-related entities that generate BRI and the teams to telecast or otherwise distribute any performance by the player under this contract, including in NBA games or any excerpts, uh, and to produce license offer for sale, uh, sell, market, or otherwise exhibit, distribute, transmit, or perform on a live, delayed, or archived basis any such performance. And for the purposes of clarity, any use of a player's player attributes that has been expre expressly authorized by the player, not including in the contract, shall not be an authorized endorsement or an unauthorized sponsor promotion. If a player alleges that a team is in default of his of paying him, then the player has to notify the team in the league in writing of the facts of the alleged default or alleged failure to pay. And also, uh, the league will go ahead and notify the Players Association. And within five days after the receipt, the Players Association, on behalf of the player, has the right to request that the dispute uh, gets referred to a grievance arbitrator. And if, as a result of the arbitration, uh, the award issues in favor of the player, and if neither the team or league complies with the award within 10 days, the player has the right um, by further written notice to the team and the league to terminate the contract. Number 16, termination. The team may terminate the contract upon written notice to the player if the player will do any of the following. 
at any time fail, refuse, or neglect to perform uh, his personal conduct up to standards of good citizenship, good moral character, etc., commit a significant and inexcusable physical attack against any official or employee of the team or the NBA other than another player or any person in attendance at any NBA game, fail to exhibit sufficient skill or competitive ability to qualify to continue as a member of the team, provided that if this contract is terminated <clears throat> prior to January 10 or in the case of a two-way contract prior to January 20, and the player is unfit to play as a result of an injury resulting directly from playing with the team, the player will continue to receive his full base compensation. Or in the case of a two-way contract, the full two-way G League salary plus any two-way NBA salary that has been earned by the player, um, less all workers comp and any government uh, withholdings. Um until the time the player is fit to play basketball, but not beyond the season during which the termination occurred and provided further that if the contract is terminated um, during January 10 or in the case of a two-way contract from the January 20th of any season through the end of the season, the player will be entitled to receive his full base compensation. And last but not least, a uh, player may not fail or refuse or neglect to render services via his contract in a ma manner that will materially breach the contract. Uh, that's also cause for termination by the team. If the contract is terminated by the team due to disability caused by an injury when the player is playing for the team and notice of the injury is given by the player, the player will be entitled to receive his full base compensation for the season in which the injury was sustained or in the case of a two-way contract, his two-way annual G League salary prorated as necessary via the rules we described before. Um, if the two-way contract is entered uh, after the start of the G League regular season, plus any two-way NBA salary earned by that player during that season prior to the date of termination, less the two-way player's two-way G League salary, covering the number of NBA days of service accrued by the two-way player during the NBA regular season prior to the date of termination, less all workers' comp benefits and, and government deductions. Now, that's going to be a theme whenever the contract is terminated via the uh, player being injured while participating with the team. If the contract's terminated by the team prior to the first game of the regular season, uh, due to an injury that was sustained or suffered during a preceding season or after the season, but prior to the player's participation in any basketball practice or game played for the team, payment by the team of any compensation earned through the date of termination, um, payment of the player's board, lodging, and uh, expense allowance during the training camp, and payment of the reasonable traveling expenses of the player to his home city, and expert training of the coaches, uh, provided by the team to the player during the training season will be full payment to the player. If the contract's terminated by the team during NBA training camp, then the payment by the team of compensation earned through the date of the termination uh, via paragraph 3B, payment of the player's board and lodging um, and his expense allowance, etc., is going to be full payment to the player. If the contract is terminated by the team after the first game of the regular season, except in the cases via subparagraphs A, I, 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 and B of the paragraph 16, with respect to a standard NBA contract, the player will get full compensation here under a sum of money which, when added to the salary which he's already received, will represent the same proportionate amount of the annual sum set forth in Exhibit 1 or Exhibit 1A. Here, too, is the number of days of the regular season then passed, bears to the total number of days of such regular season, plus the reasonable travel expenses of the player to his home. And it will be the same uh, with respect to a two-way contract. Now, if the team wants to terminate a contract uh, via subparagraph A of paragraph 16, it has to first comply with the waiver procedure, which is as follows. The team first needs to request that the NBA commissioner request waivers from all other clubs, and that waiver request may not be withdrawn. Next, upon the receipt of the waiver request, any other NBA team can claim assignment of the contract 
at the waiver price that may be fixed by the league and the priority of claims to be determined in accordance with NBA constitution and bylaws. Next, if the contract is claimed, the team agrees that it will, upon the assignment of the contract to the claiming team, notify the player of the assignment and the player agrees to report. After that, or I should say, if the contract isn't claimed prior to the expiration of the waiver period, it'll terminate and the team will promptly deliver written notice of the termination to the player. The NBA will promptly notify the Players Association of the disposition of any waiver requests. Now, a copy of the waiver procedure set forth in the NBA Constitution and bylaws uh, is going to govern this process and they will be attached to the contract. Now, upon any termination of the contract by the player, all obligations of the team to pay compensation will cease on the date of termination, except the obligation of the team to pay the player's compensation to the said date. Number 19, release. The player releases and waives any and all claims he may have that or that may arise during the term of his contract against the NBA, the G League, and every member of the NBA or the G League, and any employee of the NBA, G League, or their respective related entities, excluding persons employed as players, and any person with the NBA, MBPA, anti-drug program, the grievous arbitrator, the system arbitrator, and any other arbitrator or expert retained by the NBA or the Players Association in both cases, and any injury that is subject to the provisions of paragraph 7, any fighting or form of violent and or unsportsmanlike conduct occurring during any practice, G League game, NBA exhibition, regular season, or playoff game, the testing procedures, or the imposition of any penalty set forth in paragraph 8, of the anti-drug program and any injury suffered in the course of his employment as to which he has or would have claimed for workers' comp benefits. The foregoing shall not apply to any claim of medical malpractice against a team-affiliated physician or other medical personnel. An excerpt from the NBA Constitution, Misconduct. Now this is that Article 35 that um, was mentioned earlier. The provisions of Article 35 will govern all players in the association. The commissioner will direct the dismissal and perpetual disqualification of any player found to cause any game of basketball to result otherwise than on its merits. Any act or conduct that has been prejudicial to or against the best interests of the association, uh, a fine not exceeding $50,000 may be imposed or there may be time for uh, suspension, or the commission may do both to a player. If a player makes any statements that are harmful to the league or is guilty of conduct that does not conform to the standards of morality or fair play, then they can also be fined up to $50,000 and or be suspended. Uh, any player who induces, persuades, or attempts to induce or persuade any coach, player, trainer, general manager uh, to enter into negotiations for or relating to his services or negotiates or contracts for such services will be charged with such tampering and be given an opportunity to answer the charges. Now the commissioner will have the power to suspend the player for a definite or indefinite period or to impose a fine that will not exceed $50,000 in this case or do both. Now, any player who directly or indirectly wagers money or bets anything of value on the outcome of a game will be charged with that uh, wagering and given an opportunity to answer to the charges. And the penalty for that offense uh, can include a fine, suspension, expulsion, and or perpetual disqualification from further association with the league or any of its members. Except for a penalty imposed under paragraph F of Article 35, any challenge by a team to the decisions and acts of the commissioner via Article 35 will be appealable to the Board of Governors. And any challenge by a player to the decisions or acts of the commissioner via Article 35 will be governed by the provisions of Article 31 of the NBA MBPA Collective Bargaining Agreement then in effect. All right, here's an excerpt from the NBA bylaws. Waiver right, um, except for sales and trading between members, no member shall sell, option, or otherwise assign the contract with the rights to the services of or the right to negotiate with the player 
without complying to the waiver procedure via this constitution bylaws. Now the waiver price. The waiver price is $1,000 per player. The waiver procedure. Now the player will be assumed to have been waived unless a member notifies the commissioner of a claim to the rights to such player. Once a member, member has notified the commissioner or the commissioner's designee of the desire to secure waivers, then the notice may not be withdrawn. A, a player remains the financial responsibility of the member placing him on waivers until the waiver period set by the commissioner has expired. The waiver period. Now, any members wishing to claim the rights of a player needs to do so by giving notice by phone and in, a, in writing within 48 hours after the time of the notice. The commissioner uh, needs to receive that. Waiver preferences. In the event that more than one member claims the rights to the player on waivers, the claiming member with the lowest team standing at the time the waiver was requested is entitled to acquire the rights. If the request for waiver occurs uh, after the last day of the season and before 1159 Eastern Time on the following November 30th, the standings at the close of the previous season will govern. If the winning percentage of two claiming teams are the same, the tie will be determined on the basis of the regular season games between the two teams during the season or during the preceding season. If it's still tied, a coin toss is going to occur. And both conferences of the association will be deemed merged and the consolidating standing will control for the purposes of determining standings. Players acquired through waivers. A member that has acquired a player through a waiver may not sell or trade the rights for a period of 30 days after the acquisition. Provided that if the rights uh, were acquired between seasons, the 30-day period will begin on the first day of the next succeeding season. Additional waiver rules. The commissioner or board of governors may from time to time adopt additional rules to this procedure. The actual exhibits in the uniform player contract are as follows. Exhibit 1 is compensation. Exhibit 1A, compensation, minimum player salary. Exhibit 1B is compensation, 2A player salary. Exhibit 2, compensation protection. And with automatic stretch provision. In the event that the team terminates the contract and the team is obligated to make payments to the player via Exhibit 2, such payments will be made in accordance with the following schedule. If the aggregate amount owed to the player is 250000 or less, then it will be paid with semi-monthly installments via the payment schedule set forth in this contract. Each installment will equal the amount of base comp that was due per pay period for the applicable season immediately before the player's separation until it's paid in full. If the aggregate amount owed exceeds 250000 the amount needs to be paid as follows. The base compensation with respect to the, quote, current season at the time when the request for waivers on the player is made will be paid with the payment schedule uh, set forth in a contract. Each installment will equal the base compensation that was due per pay period immediately before the player's separation until uh, it is paid in full. And for the purposes of this paragraph two, only the, quote, current season means the period from September 1 through June 30th. The remaining base comp will be aggregated and paid in equal amounts per year over a period of equal to twice the number of NBA seasons, including any season covered by an option year, remaining on the contract following the date upon which the request for waivers occurred, plus one NBA season. If the waivers was requested September 1 through June 30th, the number of NBA seasons remaining on the contract will not include the current season. The rescheduled payments will be paid over the applicable number of NBA seasons in equal semi-monthly installments on the pay dates via paragraph 3A of the contract. Now, for the purposes of section 409A of the Internal Revenue Code, each installment is going to be treated as a separate payment. Standard conditions or limitations. The player's base compensation protection will not be applicable if the player's lack of skill, death, injury, or illness, and or mental disability results from the player's violation of paragraph 12, which listed all of those things that he cannot take part in, all those activities, sports, or what have you. And in addition to that, intentional self-inflicted injury, attempted suicide, and or suicide, abuse of alcohol, any use of prohibited substance or controlled substance, abuse of or addiction to prescription drugs, 
conduct occurring during a commission of any felony for which the player is convicted, including a plea of guilty, no contest, or nolo contendere, participation in any riot, insurrection of war, or other military activities, or failure to comply with the requirements of paragraph 7D through I of the contract. Exhibit 3 is prior injury exclusion. Exhibit 4, trade payments. Exhibit 5, other activities. Exhibit 6, physical exam. The contract will be invalid unless the player passes a physical examination that is conducted within three days of execution of the contract and the results reported by the team to the player within six business days of the execution of the contract. Exhibit 7, substitution for uniform player contract, paragraph 7B. Paragraph 7B was deleted and the following will be substituted in place and instead of. The player agrees that he will, to the best of his ability, maintain himself in a physical condition sufficient to play skilled basketball at all times. If the player is not in physical condition at the date of his first scheduled game, the team has the right to suspend the player for successive one-week periods until the player, in the reasonable judgment of the team's physician, says he's in good condition, provided that at the end of each one-week period of suspension, if the team believes the player still is not in good condition, and if the player requests then the player will be examined by a physician or physicians designated for such purpose by the president and or any vice president um, of the American Society of Orthopedic Physicians or equivalent organization, the quote reviewing physician, whose sole judgment will be binding. The suspension of the player will be terminated promptly upon failure of the team to give the player required notice at the end of the one week period or upon the finding of that reviewing physician that the player is, in fact, in physical condition to play skilled basketball. In the event of a suspension permitted, the compensation, excluding any signing bonus or incentive comp, payable to the player for any season during the suspension, will be reduced in the same proportion as the length of the period of the disability so determined bears to the length of the season. Exhibit 8, Sign and Trade. Exhibit 9, one-season non-guaranteed training camp contracts. The player's right to receive any compensation other than compensation via paragraph 3B is eliminated in the event the contract is terminated prior to the first day of the regular season, provided that if the player is injured as a direct result of playing with the team, then uh, accordingly would be entitled, but for this Exhibit 9, to compensation, the team's sole liability will be to pay the player 6000 upon termination. Exhibit 10, G League bonus and two-way player conversion. Contract termination slash G League. In the event this contract is terminated by the team via the NBA waiver procedure, the player will be entitled to receive from the team the bonus amount provided above in this Exhibit 10, provided that the player signs with the G League prior to the deadline set by the G League for G League teams to designate affiliate players, is initially signed by the G League to the G League affiliate and timely reports to that affiliate, does not leave the G League, example, by buying out his contract with the G League and signing a contract with an international team for a period of 60 days, the quote 60-day bonus window, uh, with such bonus payable within 30 days after the 60-day bonus window. Two-way player conversion option. A team will have the option to convert this contract to a two-way contract, quote, two-way player conversion option, provided that it must be exercised prior to the first day of the NBA regular season and may not be exercised if it will result in a violation of Article 10, Section 4D. If the team exercises this option, Exhibit 1A will immediately become null and void and the player's compensation will be equal to the two-way player salary applicable for that season. The player's right to the bonus amount will be rescinded and the player's contract will be protected for lack of skill and injury or illness at the amount equal to the conversion protection amount in this Exhibit 10. Standard NBA Contract Conversion Option In the event the two-way player conversion option is exercised by the team, the team will thereafter have the option to convert the contract to a standard NBA contract, quote, standard NBA contract conversion option. If the team exercises the standard NBA contract conversion option, then the base compensation amount applicable to the two-way contract 
via this Exhibit 10 will immediately become null and void, and the player's compensation will be equal to the minimum player's salary for that season beginning on the date that the option was exercised. Now, any bonus amount must equal the conversion protection amount and may only be included if the team has a G League affiliate. Exhibit B1 is the 2017-2018 NBA Rookie Scale. Exhibit B2 is the 2017-2018 Baseline Rookie Scale. Exhibit B3 is the 2018-2019 and 2019-2020 NBA Rookie Scales. And Exhibit C is the 2017-2018 Minimum Annual Salary Scale. That concludes Exhibits A through C of the Uniform Player Contract. Happy studying. See you at the top.